Welcome to another special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. This week, we're coming to you from one of the car craziest countries in the world, the country of France. It's our pleasure to share with you the rich histories of two of France's most recognized names in automotive history. The 2CV was actually presented at the Paris Motor Show in 1948. First, an insider's tour of Citroen's very private heritage center. This car was car of the year in the United States in 1970, what, what year? 72. 72. And then we're exploring the fantastic La Venture de Michelin. So you're telling me that Michelin was making airplanes. Yes. Now you're telling me Michelin made a car. Yes, of course. And it all starts right now on McGuire's Car Crazy. We travel the world to talk with men and women who are passionate car guys to find out what makes people emotionally connected to their cars. Crazy! It's time to get to the heart of the car guy. <laughs> this is Car Crazy. Since the beginning of the automobile, the French have played a significant role in the creation of the car culture. One name will always stand out when you think of French cars, Citroën. And today, we're the first American television show to go into Citroën's conservatoire, their private museum that showcases the heritage of this amazing mark. I've been coming to Europe for about 40 years and I've always appreciated the background of Citroën, this great mark. Walking through this place, you get a whole other dimension. The history of Citroën is so amazing. Denis Wheel is the general manager of uh, Citroën Historic, all this stuff. So thank you for joining us today and help us understand what all we're seeing in this room. Thank you for coming and welcome to the Conservatoire. In fact, here it's a place where we are keeping the collection of the brand since 1919. Uh, it's not a museum, but we can open it for collectors or for journalists like you. Am I correct in hearing that this is the first time American television has been in, in this place? It's the first time for an American right? TV. Well, yeah. We're, we're yeah. very honored, we really are. <laughs> Help us understand the essence of what makes Citroën so special. André Citroën was uh, an engineer and he wanted to become a big car maker. And after the First World War, he began his brand, Citroën. Ten years later, in 1929, he was the first car maker in France, the first in Europe, and the second in the world behind Henry Ford. This car right in front of us represents the first year, 1919. Yes, this is the first car, the A-Type, which was uh, sold in July 1919. André Citroën rebought this car 10 years later to the first owner. Really? And uh, this really? is the first made by the brand. Without question, André Citroën was a creative genius during the early days of the automobile. An amazing picture of progress is this next car that dates back to 1934. Let's talk a little bit more about Andre Citroën. This was an amazing man and so many firsts. Yes, this engineer wants always the best for his customers and uh, the first mass production car, the A-Type, well, has got already electric starter, electric lights, spare wheel. After in 25, you had the B10, all in steel body car. Then uh, in 32, you have the flouting engine on the Rosalie. And in 34, the famous Traction Avant, the first front-wheel drive car in mass production in the world. Let's go back to 1932 for a minute, because it really highlights the collaboration between Henry Ford and Andre Citroën. If you look at the 32 Citroën, there is quite a resemblance from the 32 Ford. I mean, one could think it is a 32 Ford. Yes, because <laughs> they have a lot of British relations between together, and uh, Andre Citroën uh, offered uh, 32 Citroën cars to Henry Ford because he wants to show the best of cars he made in France. This car is what, what year? 1931 here. 1934. 34. It is the launch of the Traction Avant, the front wheel drive car. It's a revolution because with a front wheel drive car, it's easier to drive. And you have also a monocoque chassis, all in steel, and also the hydraulic brakes. So it's very efficient on the road. Much more to see. Come on, yes. let's go take a look. One of the most recognizable and cherished contributions to automotive technology was Citroen's 2CV. And these next cars were thought to be lost forever. Okay, the CV, this this area, this this is a really interesting story. Tell us, tell our viewers about the CV. This 2CV was made to launch it before the Second World War, but finally the 2CV were launched in 48. And the goal was to make a, a popular car for everybody. When the, the war started, there was interest in keeping this car hidden. Was, it, was that the story? Yes, the car were hidden in our test centers and in another place in France. 
because we don't want the Germans to keep the te to take the technology <laughs> of this car. Wasn't it a long time before they discovered these cars again? Yes, because they, they were hidden and we rediscovered it only in the 60s. Oh my goodness. This car was found and later in the 90s, three other cars. And now there were only five cars which uh, are in the world. Four uh, here uh, uh. and another one in the Roche Taille so. Museum near Lyon. Here in the conservatoire, you see so much that truly showcases Citroën's heritage. But some of their proudest accomplishments have been in the world of motorsports. We could spend the entire show on motorsports. I mean, you, that, that's where, that was your previous life with motorsports for Citroën. I began in the <laughs> motorsport department uh, 20 years ago. But, I mean, you are just knocking them dead with, with rally. I mean, the World Rally Championship for how many years? You just win it every year. Uh, for the driver, we won uh, nine times in a row with Sebastian Loeb, and for the brand, eight times. The technology at Citroën is really quite amazing. Always, and always the technology. And uh, we gave some uh, technology advice to the engineers of normal cars with the rally experience. Right, of course, the motorsports always plays to the, right, the real cars. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, We'll show you the most regal ride that Citroen has ever created. A lot of famous people have been in this car. President Nixon was here in 71. And it's a look into the future of this historic mark. Some amazing looking cars, none more amazing than this. This is the Matisse. This is the Matisse. All that and more, McGuire's Car Crazy returns. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here as the first American television show to be brought into the Citroen Heritage Center, which houses virtually every significant creation of the brand. At one time, Citroen owned Maserati and birthed what was ultimately crowned Car of the Year in the United States. Oh, and I know this car. This car was Car of the Year in the United States in 1970, what, what year? 72. 72. Yes. And didn't this have a, like a Maserati engine in it? V6 Maserati engine. V6 we, Maserati engine. We bought Maserati That's in 68. Right. That's right. For how many years owned Maserati? Seven years. Seven years? Only. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but enough to put it in this car. And then it, it had such great promise, but then there was the gas shortage. Yes, we uh, unfortunately we stopped it in uh, '75 because of the petrol crisis. Oh, it was such an amazing car! I was ashamed. That really was because we thought Citroen was really going to make it in America, but it hasn't been there now for 30 years. Citroen's game-changing innovations have never stopped. They really push the envelope with everything they do. And a perfect example of that is this concept car they call the Matisse. We're in the midst of all kinds of concept cars. None more amazing than this. This is the Matisse. This is the Matisse. This is, I mean, explain this car. This is, this is over the top. We want to show the best of Citroën to the world. We have a normal uh, diesel engine, but we have also electric engine in the rear wheels. So, so this is what we call a, a Matisse hybrid car. You it, know? This car gets up and goes. This is a fast car. It's a fast car, yes, uh, about uh, 160. Most car manufacturers destroy their concept cars. But you have a lot of concept cars around here, so you have a tradition of apparently keeping them. We want to keep the concept. They are here after their motor show life. They are coming here, and uh -huh. we, from time to time, we show it in classical motor shows. It's, it's, it's fun just to walk around here seeing these cars I've never seen before. Of course, every collection has its pH de resistance, and this next one-off coach-built chariot is theirs, fit for a king or a president in their case. This has been such an amazing tour, where now we find ourselves in President Charles de Gaulle's limousine. Yes, President de Gaulle used his DS at the end of his presidency. This very car. Yes, and uh, now we are president, Barry. <laughs> there we are. Uh, de Gaulle loved Citroën, so there's an interesting story to that. We can say the goal of Citroën, he was the owner of Traction Avant, he used the DS when he was president, and even the DS saved his life because uh, some people tried to assassinate him in 62, and with the hydraulic suspension, they can continue the road even if the car was not in good condition. A lot of famous people have been in this car. Yes, <laughs> President Nixon was here in 71 he at was? your place. It, yeah. it, I'm sitting yeah. here where President Nixon is yes, at. Is that right? right? Isn't that amazing? Hey, you know, uh, we've been through so much. I want to take one more stroll through these cars before we finish up, OK? Can we do that? OK, we can do that. There's so much yet to see here at the conservatoire, and yet, even here, they can't capture all that Citroen has done and continues to do. The technology of Citroen has been so admired all over the world. How many countries does Citroen sell into now? More than 60 countries now. 60 countries, yeah. 60 countries. And manufacturing, where all do you manufacture? So we manufacture in uh, Europe, of course, uh, South America, Russia, China, because China. it's a big market for us. <laughs> it must be. Uh, do you do it well in China? 
Yes, it's doing well, and uh, this year it will be the first market for Citroën. You mean you'll be selling more cars in China than here? Yes, right. Is that yeah. right? Oh my goodness! And isn't that perhaps we'll, another goal will be perhaps to come back also yeah, to the to US. Come, back. come on, we got to yeah. get back in the US with this yeah, great because car because it's also a nice yeah, market. This has been a walk through time for us. What an amazing mark, and not all that well known in the United States. Thank you for so, uh, for coming <laughs> and uh, enjoy your stay. All right, in my my new best friend. Thank you so <laughs> much. Just great hanging out with you. What a privilege to be the first American film crew to be brought into this special place that's not even open to the public. Most people don't even know this place even exists and still won't unless they watch McGuire's Car Crazy. Next up, it's the French family that literally put rubber on the road. We're going inside the fantastic La Venture de Michelin. Of course, we're about cars, not tires, but you can't have cars without tires. No. <laughs> don't you dare go away. Welcome back to Bavar's Car Crazy. We're making our way through France, learning the history of this country's leading contributors to the automotive world. We've just wrapped things up with the Citroën Heritage Center, and we've made our way to beautiful Clermont-Ferrand, home to La Venture de Michelin. We're here in Clermont-Ferrand, France. Stand beside, check it out, the largest tire in the world. This baby holds 100 tons. This is Michelin country, I gotta tell you. Standing literally in the shadows of the Michelin Sports Stadium right here. Behind me is the Michelin Adventure. They have such cool stuff in there, you will not believe it. Come on, let's check it out. La Venture de Michelin tells the phenomenal story of how the technology from this tire company has impacted all tire companies, which our next guest knows so well. Meet Gozog Denarp, the manager of the Michelin Adventure. I would say it was a museum, but you call it something different. What do you call no, this? It's, it's more than a museum because it's, it tells about uh, the history, the actuality, and also the, the future of the Michelin Group. Of course, we're about cars, not tires, but you can't have cars without tires. No, <laughs> yeah, and sure. So the, the history of the two go together. We've never thought about it before, but. It's so integral that it's important to be here. The oldest tire manufacturer in the world, is that right? Yes, I think so, yes. Now, there are two brothers, two Michelin brothers. Tell yeah. me about the two brothers. Right ah, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's uh, the story of two brothers, one an engineer, André, and another an artist called Edouard. André was the man of the advertising, and it was an engineer and the artist was the man of the industry at Michelin. Now, we have a plane right behind us here. Yeah. You have to tell me about this plane. Uh, this plane is a Breguet 14, uh, which was uh, built by Michelin and Breguet uh, during the war in, uh, in 1917. Uh, and we produced during the war uh, 2,000 airplanes for the French Army. Well, there's so much to see. Can we get started? Uh, yes. We want to walk through here and get the, the other side of the story from the automobile with yeah. the tires that make us really go. This display area captures the evolution of Michelin's historic first in tire technology throughout the years. And how did it all start? Would you believe? On a bike? Of course, one would think that the Michelin Tire Company started with cars, of course, but it didn't. It started with a bicycle tire. Tell yes. us the story. With these bicycle tires, this, right this specific one. Because one day, a British cyclist arrived at Clermont-Ferrand here because he had a puncture on his tube, inflated tube, mm -hmm. with a bandage around. <laughs> it was the technology of this time, OK? Sure, and sure. Uh, Edouard Michelin uh, repaired this with his team, repaired this uh, bandage. Uh, and he spent uh, uh, 15 hours to repair this technology. And six months after, with, with his engineers, Edouard Michelin find the way to uh, decrease this time to 15 minutes. So did they enter another race to kind of show off? Yes, they involved in a, 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 this uh, tire uh, in, a, in a race called Paris-Brest-Paris -Paris in 1891. And the, the man that uh, was on this bicycle won the race and proved that the technology, the Michelin technology was very, very new technology, very, very and uh, changed, efficient and technology. changed the world. Of course, the results on two wheels were fantastic, but just how did this groundbreaking discovery transition to our favorite mode of transportation, the car? So you're telling me that Michelin was making airplanes, yes. now you're telling me Michelin made a car. Yes, of course, because to test the first tire, uh, the, the Michelin brothers made this vehicle that was the first car on uh -huh. pneumatic tires that is called uh, the lightning flash. This was what started pneumatic tires. You yes. test them on this car. Yes. What, where did the name come from, lightning uh, flash? Because there was uh, an issue about the, 
the weight distribution between uh, the front and the rear be because of a very heavy engine at the rear. Okay. So okay. the vehicle make that <laughs> the zigzags on the road. Yeah. So it was called the lightning flash for oh this reason, goodness. you know, Barry. And with that confirmation of their tire technology, the whole world took note that Michelin was ready to roll. And the biggest marks of the day took note as well. OK, Gozog, you have to tell me about this wheel here. <laughs> this, this is the first spare wheel in the world created by Michelin. Really? Okay? And it was to really? put on this car. Okay. This vehicle is a Citroën Type A. Okay. And it is the first production car uh -huh. with pneumatic tires really? in the world, Barry. Really? In the world. Okay? Oh my goodness. What year? What yes, year? 1990. This tread then, was, would that be like the first tread on a tire? Oh, no, it was not the first tread. Okay. The first tread was for advertising. You have to explain that one to me. Yeah. <laughs> we, we put an M on the tread for advertising to let the M on the ground, you know? And after, we uh, found that it was good for grip. We're just getting rolling here at La Venture de Michelin, and when we come back, Michelin's contribution to car guys goes way beyond the tire. If you wanted to use a car, how could you use a car? There were no sign, no maps, nothing. And the innovation that would change it all, the radio. And it all started with this car right here. Yes. That's amazing. So much more to come on McGuire's Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here in Clermont-Ferrand, France, home to La Venture de Michelin. And while most everyone knows how hard they've worked to keep us glued to the road, Michelin's contribution to car guys does go way beyond the tire. We're here with Dominic Gameball, the Vice President of Technical Information, but more importantly, he's a car guy, okay? One of our guys. From your heart, your passion, we're, we're looking at Michelin not so much from a corporate standpoint, but just the innovative things that have gone on. And this is an interesting display right behind us here. Yes, because you know, they wanted to innovate not only on tie. If you wanted to use a car, how could you use a car? Because there were no sign, no maps, nothing. And Michelin said, how can we help them? Let's make road signs. Between the road signs, you need to have maps. Right. And that is why also we developed oh, all the okay, maps. That's where all the maps started from. But we developed also a kind of trip advisor service, you know? People could call and say, okay, I want to go from there to there. What can, what can I do? Where can I have gas? And there were plenty of people looking at different documents everywhere. And with those documents, they, they were able to give them answer. Okay, you have an hotel which is there. You have a service station which is there and so on. And check this out. Dominic shows me one of the first Michelin guides ever from the year 1900, which lives in a climate-controlled vault, hence the white gloves. But if the glove don't fit, uh, let's see, no, that was another story. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there is a restaurant here, and here you can have your tie it's repair. Like what you have now. Yes, You're doing okay. it in 1900. In 1900. That is amazing. Surprisingly, Michelin's expertise has gone way beyond tires. In fact, for a while, they were knee deep in the production of cars. You know, I was surprised. Michelin actually made a car back in the early 1900s, but let's talk about Citroën when they went broke in 1935. Michelin stepped in, yes. took charge. Took charge. And Pierre Michelin stepped in as president. Pierre Michelin was president of Citroën. Michelin had a, a project of a very small, affordable vehicle, or everybody called the TPV, two petit vehicle. Unfortunately, Pierre Michelin was killed in, in an accident, but Pierre Boulanger, was nominated president of Citroën. Right. Who was, was a Michelin guy. He was really a Michelin guy with lots of experience with Michelin. There is a very, very interesting document from Pierre Boulanger where he defined really what this vehicle should be about. Which was? Can you, can you just can oh, you? I can of, just give sure. you a few key yeah. examples. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This vehicle is made for people who don't know how to drive. So make their life easy. Mm. Anybody very who simple. is a farmer, who is a worker, who has no experience of maintenance should be able to maintain his own vehicle. So it's an Sounds amazing, <laughs> an amazing document, really. And of course, the innovation that would forever change how high performance tires were made, the radio. Of course, we can't come to Michelin without talking about radio tires. And they didn't come to the United States until 1966. But you're telling me they date all the way back in your technology, 1936. Help us hear this story. I mean, this yes, is amazing. Michelin introduced the metallic tie 
in 1936. That's the first time that we were capable to have the tie and the metal grip together. And the car that you see here is a very important car okay. for the tie industry, because right. without that car, the tie industry would not have gone to radio because all the research on this, car. on this specific <laughs> vehicle here, you know. Goodness. I now have a lot more appreciation for this car. Yes, there are billions of radio on the road now. And it all started with this car right here. Yes. That's amazing, that really is. You know, after spending a day with Dominic, I can tell you, he's certifiable. I mean, totally car crazy. And there's one car here that automatically starts his engine. I could not leave this place without having you understand how car crazy this guy is. He's not just a car guy, he is car crazy, I gotta tell you. Tell him about your relationship with this car. My connection with this vehicle is the fact that Renault have given me the opportunity to drive myself, not the 2005 Formula One of Fernando Alonso, but the 2004. <laughs> you drove that car? Yes, I you did. You drove it. You took it on the track? Yes, I on mean, the that's track. A, talk about a scary, fast car. I mean, it's not scary. OK, he's certifiable, safe to say. <laughs> OK. Dominique. Barry, it was nice having you. you. I mean, you represent, you represent the car guys of Michelin so very, very well. Thanks. A lot of fun. Now, we have a car out in the parking lot. Yeah. Can you can we take me for a little ride in that car? This vehicle is a very special vehicle. It's a Lancia Aurelia. Huh? And this vehicle won Le Mans in 1951 okay. with radial tie. First w victory with radial tie in Le Mans in the two liter category. And we can have a so go okay. in that vehicle right, if you right. want. We'll drive off in the sunset. Sure. In your Lancia, okay? Wow. Thank you both Dominic and Gonzag, two awesome car guys who've made our trip to La Viture de Michelin absolutely fascinating and to Denny Wheel for guiding us through the very special and very private Citroen Heritage Center. And what an honor to be the first American television show to share both of these amazing venues with car guys all over the world, allowing us to make all of you just a little bit more car crazy.